All right, well, welcome aboard the world famous Judges Cruise Adventurers. Horseplay is not allowed on board. If you want to play with your horse, you'll have to do it elsewhere. We do, however, allow you to monkey around as long as you don't go bananas. Oh, what was up? Oh, that was so All right, load up. It's getting shaky out there. It's time to go. Please move in together as close as possible to try to cover up the seat cushions. There's been extensive scientific research that this color of boat attracts the flying piranha, so try to cover up as much as you can. I'm glad you're on board. This is the Leaky Tiki. My name is Jason and I'll be your captain, cruise director, and dance instructor for the next five exciting days and six romantic nights. <laughs> Do you feel the mist on your faces? That is that poisonous bacterium that you can only get from the judges' cruise. That is so bad. That is so bad. No. Now, if you look over there, there's no, that's not a house cat. That is a Bengal tiger, and they can jump over 20 feet. But we are at least 15 feet away, so we'll be fine. He'll jump right over us. No. <laughs> that is so no. On the Judges Cruise, you're going to meet the 12 judges listed in the Book of Judges. That is Abdon, Deborah, Elon, Eha, Gideon, Ibzanjer, Jephthah, Othniel, Samson, Shamgar, and Tola. Abdon, Deborah, Eha, Elon, Gideon, Ibsen, Jared, Jephthah, Othniel, Samson, Shamgar, Tola. Now, there are three things that you probably already know about the judges. One, they are not what you think. When you hear of a judge, you think of courtroom. That's not what these guys are. They are warriors that God used to save the people of Israel. That's point number two. God used them to help Israel. Because they were stuck in the same cycle of going after fake gods, God punishing them for that, them saying they're sorry, and then God raising up a judge to save them, they continued to do that over and over and over again. That's why they needed help from the judges. Then there would be peace for a time. Then the cycle would start all over again. Now, number three, the judges were not great people. Now, God did use them to save the people of Israel. And while that is great, some of the choices they made, especially as we get into these final weeks of judges like Gideon, we're not great guys. Now, as we go through these real life stories, it's important to remember that while God picked them, he doesn't support everything that they do. That's important to remember today. Now, as we go through these judges, you'll see that they're getting worse and worse. In fact, the two that we're talking about today are the worst ones in the book of Judges. And we're going to see what happens as Israel continues to follow these fake gods. All right, the boat's going to drop anchor here, and it's up to you to visit some of the judges in our judges' cruise and get a stamp from Abdon, Deborah, Abdon, Deborah, Ehud, Elon, Gideon, Ibsen, Jer, Othniel. Shamgar, and Tola. Bye-bye now.
this is the highlight of the tour. It's my favorite part of the jungle. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the eighth wonder of the world. Wait for it. The backside of water. It looks just like the front side. It's completely different. It's the eighth wonder of the world, the backside of water. Guys, get your cameras out. Come on. You don't want to miss this. Snap, snap, snap. Keep snapping. Now, the next two judges are Jephta and Samson. Now, as we tell you these stories of these judges, you're going to see familiar statements. The Israelites are doing evil in the sight of the Lord. That means they are worshiping false gods and hurting and killing one another in order to please those fake gods. Now, please note, these two guys are not good guys, and they do some terrible things today. Jephthah, our next judge, was risen up because the people of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They began to worship many fake gods and didn't worship the one true God at all, which made God angry. So God sent the Philistines and the Ammonites to take over Israel, which they did for 18 years. The people cried out to God and apologized, so God made Jephthah a judge. He was already a mighty warrior, but his father had abandoned him, and his mother was an outcast. So he grew up having to fight for everything that he had. The Israelites were being destroyed by the Ammonites. They came to Jephthah and said, we need your help. Well, at first he refused because he said, you guys didn't want me around before, and now you want me to lead? No way. They said, if you lead us, we will do whatever you say. Now, Jephthah loved that, and he took charge as a leader and began to pick a fight with the king of Ammon. Eventually, he went across the river and fought the Ammonites. Before he went into battle, he said, God, if you give me victory, I will sacrifice the first thing that comes out of my house when I get home. Now let's stop there for a second. That is an incredibly foolish thing to say. God is not like the fake gods, and Jephthah didn't even realize that. God doesn't want sacrifices. Hosea 6.6 6 says, I don't want sacrifices or offerings. I want you to know me and love me. Now Jephthah won the battle and went home. Remember, God picked these judges, but he does not approve of everything that they do. When he got home, his daughter was what ran out to him. Jephthah decided God wanted him to sacrifice his daughter, so he did. Terrible choice, terrible dad, terrible judge. Jephthah only led Israel for six years. God did not approve of that. He did not want that for Jephthah. He was a terrible judge. Now our next judge is Samson. The people of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So God sent the Philistines to take them over. They took over the nation of Israel for 40 years. The people cried out to God and apologized. So God raised up Samson as a judge from birth. The Bible says that God gave him huge amounts of strength and gave his parents very specific rules. Here are the rules that they were given. He wasn't allowed to touch anything dead, drink alcohol, eat grapes, or cut his hair. God gave Samson his strength so that he could be a judge and help Israel be free from their enemies and turn back to God. But Samson was not a rule follower. The Bible says that he was attacked by a lion and the Spirit of the Lord came on him and he grabbed the lion by the mouth and ripped it in half. Later on, he passed by the dead lion and saw some bees making honey and he ate the honey from it. Gross. Talk about a sweet treat. The men refused to recognize where their power came from. Jephthah was a mighty warrior, but didn't understand that it was God who was really in charge. And Samson took his strength for granted. We're going to talk about him more next week. These men were foolish. They didn't know God. Do you? The best way to know God is to become a part of his family. Now, your tour guide is going to give you a chance to do that today. But here are some questions for you. How much time do you spend getting to know God? What are some things that you know about God? 
And what are some things you've gotten wrong about God? All right, be sure to get your passport stamp for Jephta and Samson. Now, the next two judges are Jephthah and Samson. Now, as we tell you these stories of these judges, you're going to see familiar statements. The Israelites are doing evil in the sight of the Lord. That means they are worshiping false gods and hurting and killing one another in order to please those fake gods. Now, please note, these two guys are not good guys, and they do some terrible things today. Jephthah, our next judge was risen up because the people of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They began to worship many fake gods and didn't worship the one true God at all, which made God angry. So God sent the Philistines and the Ammonites to take over Israel, which they did for 18 years. The people cried out to God and apologized, so God made Jephthah a judge. He was already a mighty warrior, but his father had abandoned him, and his mother was an outcast. So he grew up having to fight for everything that he had. The Israelites were being destroyed by the Ammonites. They came to Jephthah and said, we need your help. Well, at first he refused because he said, you guys didn't want me around before and now you want me to lead? No way. They said, if you lead us, we will do whatever you say. Now Jephthah loved that. And he took charge as a leader and began to pick a fight with the king of Ammon. Eventually, he went across the river and fought the Ammonites. Before he went into battle, he said, God, if you give me victory, I will sacrifice the first thing that comes out of my house when I get home. Now, let's stop there for a second. That is an incredibly foolish thing to say. God is not like the fake gods, and Jephthah didn't even realize that. God doesn't want sacrifices. Hosea 6.6 6 says, I don't want sacrifices or offerings. I want you to know me and love me. Now Jephthah won the battle and went home. Remember, God picked these judges, but he does not approve of everything that they do. When he got home, his daughter was what ran out to him. Jephthah decided God wanted him to sacrifice his daughter, so he did. Terrible choice, terrible dad, terrible judge. Jephthah only led Israel for six years. God did not approve of that. He did not want that for Jephthah. He was a terrible judge. Now our next judge is Samson. The people of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So God sent the Philistines to take them over. They took over the nation of Israel for 40 years. The people cried out to God and apologized. So God raised up Samson as a judge from birth. The Bible says that God gave him huge amounts of strength and gave his parents very specific rules. Here are the rules that they were given. He wasn't allowed to touch anything dead, drink alcohol, eat grapes, or cut his hair. God gave Samson his strength so that he could be a judge and help Israel be free from their enemies and turn back to God. But Samson was not a rule follower. The Bible says that he was attacked by a lion and the Spirit of the Lord came on him and he grabbed the lion by the mouth and ripped it in half. Later on, he passed by the dead lion and saw some bees making honey and he ate the honey from it. Gross. 
talk about a sweet treat. The men refused to recognize where their power came from. Jephthah was a mighty warrior, but didn't understand that it was God who was really in charge. And Samson took his strength for granted. We're going to talk about him more next week. These men were foolish. They didn't know God. Do you? The best way to know God is to become a part of his family. Now, your tour guide is going to give you a chance to do that today. But here are some questions for you. How much time do you spend getting to know God? What are some things that you know about God? And what are some things you've gotten wrong about God? 